Hi, on this video for Java Tutorials, I'm going to show you three new things in our course. So I'm going to show you how to get keyboard input so people can prompt, be prompted for a number and you can enter a number. Then I'm going to show you an item called try and catch, which will check for errors. And then finally, I'm going to show you how to round off numbers if somebody gives you a decimal and I want to round it to an integer. So here's what it looks like. I'm going to run the program just so you see where we're going. And it says, please tell me the price of a car. And so uh, my car is going to be worth $10.25. And uh, now it says, how many do you want to buy? Let's put in uh, 4.2. <laughs> and that's kind of an unusual number. So it says, I will round that 4.2 down to four. And then the price is $41. And so you can check the math to see if that was correct. So that's what's ahead of us. I'm gonna code this whole thing and explain it as we go. So you'll learn as you type. So let's start with a brand new project here. You can see that I have a project called Convert Numbers and I have a main uh, class and a main activity. So now let's get started with the question. I'm going to print off a message that says, please tell me the price of a car. And so we're using print line like we've done in previous lessons. The next goal that I have is to get input from the user. Now in Java, one method of getting input from the user is just to get it from the keyboard at the console. So the uh, object that we're going to work with is called a scanner. So I'm going to declare a variable called keyboard. Its type is scanner. So scanner type is kind of like an integer type or a float type. It's, a, it's another thing in Java. And I'm going to say that I need a new version of scanner. And you can see there's an underline here that says I'm missing something. The red line is kind of an angry symbol. And what I'm missing is to tell it where I'm scanning this data from. And I'm looking for something called system.in. So how would you know any of this stuff that I just typed here? You would have to look it up in the manual, which I did for you. So the goal here, though, is to get keyboard input. And so I've set it up so now we're able to get an answer to the question, how much do you want to pay for a car? Now, the way to save this input from the user's keyboard is to declare a variable. So I will call a double a car price. Now I want to go get this from keyboard and put a dot. You can see that the keyboard or the scanner input has lots of different things that we could ask for. And what I'm expecting is that the user will type in a float. So I will say keyboard dot next float will bring us the next number that was typed in at the keyboard. And since it's a float, we can expect a decimal point. So if they enter in something like their name, the program will crash, it will have an error. But if they type in a float, as we expect them to, things will run correctly. So let's put in a message that gives some feedback to the user. So we'll do a print line that says the price of the car is, and then we'll concatenate the car price. So we've typed a little bit of code, let's test it out with the green arrow and see if everything works as we expected. So what's my car price? So I'm gonna put in $99.22 and we get a, a message back that shows a very long decimal point. So it's not in the right format, but we do know that we got the number that was entered. Uh, where did that 22.000 come from? So the number isn't quite precisely 22 cents, is it? It's, a, it's going to be a, a factor there that is done with the computer's logic and the idea of binary math. And so it goes beyond what you need to know, but you just see that we have a very, very close number to 99.22. Next, I'm going to format this so that the uh, number does print exactly as I expect it to. So let's change this print line to print F and uh, we'll put a comma in instead of the plus sign. And then I'm going to format it using the percent %f. And I might as well use a round off to two decimal points because I'm dealing with currency. Let's see if this works. So down here in the console, it says, give me the price of a car. Let's put in something like $17.66. And this time I don't get the long number, I get the actual 0.66 as I was expecting. All right, so this is kind of a calculator program. Let's ask the user now for how many cars they would like to buy. So I'm going to print that message out and then ask for an integer. So car quantity is the variable that I'm going to be assigning and I'm going to get from the keyboard dot next int. So next float was what we used before. Next int will now only work if the user types in an integer. And then I'm going to do some calculation and give the answer. 
So print line again, and I will say the total price is, and we're going to say the quantity of cars times the car price will be our answer. So let's check this out and see how well that works. I will run the program and now answer two questions. So the price of a car, let's say it's $5.10. And now uh, how many cars would you like to buy? Let's, if I bought three of them, the total cost is now 15.29. So almost 15.30, which is what I expected. So let's do some more formatting to make this a little more accurate. So the formatting I'm going to do is down at the last line. So instead of putting uh, these lines together with a concatenation and the plus sign, I'm going to swap out for placeholders and a comma. And the print line statement will have to change to print F. So the total price of the cars will be percent %D. And then for the answer, it will be the the value is a, a float. So it'll be a, a two decimal round off and uh, we'll do a, a 0.2F. Now I also want to put in a new line so I'm going to go back and insert percent %N at the end of each of these so that way I start a new line every time it prints. Let's run this and see how that looks. So the price of the car, let's do $4.20 and how many we want to buy? I'm going to buy four of them and now I get 1680. So that seems to be more accurate now. And so what you see here is an example of a keyboard input and some calculations using integers and floats together and then formatting the answer. Now in the next part of this video, I'm going to show you how you can check for errors at the keyboard. So I'll present the problem and then we'll fix it in the next video. So it says, tell me the price of a car. And I'm gonna say a lot and you're going to see that there's a problem there. It crashed and it says there's an exception because what you entered in was not a float, it was not an integer, it was a string. And so that obviously doesn't work and we don't want that experience on our users so I'll show you how to fix that in the next video.